Hello, it's me, Katie, your consumer. And we are back with another installation to our Candy Through the Decades series. And that means we are going to do the 1970s. So get ready, folks. We got a lot of new ones to try, a lot of new facts to learn. Get ready for it. Let's go. The first thing we got is Fund It. This was a favorite of mine back when I was a kid. And coincidentally, I'm eating it in bed again. And one time I ate it in bed and got sugar everywhere. And I was sleeping in sugar for weeks. And my dad got really mad at me. Fund It was actually created back in the 1940s. And it was called Lickamade before it was called Fund It. Um, as you can see on here, it says Lickamade above Fund It. It didn't change its name to Fund It until 1989 when the Nestle company um, bought Fund It. Fund Up is essentially just sugar. Oh, and also a fun fact, Lickamade didn't come with a dipping stick for a while. So it was just sugar, which I don't understand why, but I mean, I guess you just like licked it. Lickamade. 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 I don't know. This is how I eat Fun Dip. I don't know if there's like a way, but this is how I eat it. So I like get this all saliva up and then dip. You dip it and then then you just, that's how you do it. I feel like it kind of teaches kids how to do cocaine. Maybe not. Don't say that because then all the moms are going to be like, ban fun dip, ban fun dip. No, don't because it's fun and we like to dip. All right, mom. I'm just kidding. Not you, mom. Love you, mom. You always love me fun dip. Okay, now we've got everlasting gobstoppers. They really do last a while. There's like layers. They do this technique. It's called hot panning um, that essentially gives the candy these layers because it like changes flavors. And if you've ever bitten into one, you see the layers. In the movie Willy Wonka, which this is owned by Willy Wonka, aka Nestle, it was just a uh, candy that literally never ended. <laughs> these end. We can't all live in a fictional world, Willy. And gob, believe it or not, is a slang term in the UK for mouth. So there's this funny story. Well, it's not really funny, but it's kind of like crazy. This girl, f her family filed a lawsuit against Nestle because one of these was like sitting out in the sun for a while. And so she bit into it and like suffered severe burns from it being out in the sun. So I guess these just don't melt. They just contract heat. So moral of the story, don't leave these sitting out in your car or something and then try to eat them. I'm not gonna eat it because it takes forever and we all know they're good. The next is also a popular song from my youth, Laffy Taffy, and I'll shake it for you. But Laffy Taffy actually didn't come out into, until around the 1970s. Um, and why it's Laffy is that each rapper has jokes on it. So let's see what the joke is on this one. Okay, these are both really lame, but they're technologies, so that's cool. Uh, why did the PC go to the dock? It had a virus. <laughs> um, we got green apple. My favorite, which is kind of the uh, underdog, is actually banana. I like the banana ones. Those are those are something special, I'll tell you what. The, how this taffy is different from like original taffy is it's just like a little bit thinner. And they also like shape it in a, a rectangular position. <laughs> What is saltwater taffy? I don't know. Cavities, getting cavities. Sorry, dentist. Um, all right, I'm gonna go floss now. Brazzles. First it's candy, then it's gum. I don't know if that's how the jingle goes because I'm not from 1966. Uh, start as like chalky kind of candy and then turn into gum that doesn't really chew that well. What up people that know that? <laughs> what up? These rolled out in 1966. Um, became popular in the 70s, and then 2004, the Tootsie Roll company, believe it or not, Tootsie Roll rules the freaking world, acquired these. Why do they make it so goddamn hard to open these bad, bad little chick, chick weedas? Oh. oh my lord. 
Ew, did you hear my voice crack? Ew, that was gross. What am I, a 13 year old boy? <laughs> Sometimes I talk like one. Okay, they uh, look like little buttons. They're really cute. So we're gonna do the blue one because it's an oddball. Ooh, they're kind of sour. You bite into it, really chalky. Um, I guess it kind of turns into gum, but it's gum. Up we got uh, Rainbow. These were invented back in 1940. Um, these were pretty freaking monumental in the bubble gum business because they had were the first colored bubble gum that had flavor to match the color, which is pretty extraordinary. Can we just give props? to innovation yet again. Innovation, innovation, go out and be an innovator. Invent new candy or something. But yeah, uh, I'm not gonna chew these because we got something special coming. This candy was like cigarettes in prison in the elementary school days. <laughs> Bubblicious bubble gum. Bubblicious bubble gum was invented or introduced to the market in 1977. And it was this first soft, soft bubble gum of its time. You saw gumballs before. This comes in little fat wads. And it uh, started introducing pretty innovative flavors. I think my favorite when I was a kid was the watermelon flavor. Because dang shoddy, that freaking blue. <laughs> Tasty. What the fuck? And it's just like super nice. Rather than a gumball, because you don't have to break through a shell. You just bite in and it's so freaking soft. Next we have Swedish Fish, which is actually one of my favorite candies. Um, Swedish Fish hit the market in the late 1950s, um, and it was created because they wanted to represent the Swedish culture in some way. And what better to do it than with a fish? Because fishing is a huge part of their economy, huge part of their culture. And so we got this wonderful little fish. It's fast, it's fat free, which is always a good thing, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I just love these little suckers so much. They just have really an indescribable taste. I just love them. And that's all I have to say about that subjective preferences. This was probably my absolute favorite candy when I was a kid. Um, Sour Patch Kids, hell yes. Yeah, so Sour Patch Kids hit the market in the late 1970s when they were originally under the name Mars Men, which I think is so much cooler than Sour Patch Kids. Like Mars Men? I'm gonna go to the store and get some Mars Men. You want any, bro? Yes, I do, Mars Men. And then 1986 rolled around and they called them Sour Patch Kids which was to capitalize on the popularity of Cabbage Patch dolls at the time, Wikipedia assumes. Like, no, it's not okay, little sour dude. It's not okay, but you're tasty, so I'll eat you. But I just think it's kind of weird to eat a kid, but we do it anyway. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, honeys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Swedish fish, you might be a close second, but I love you both so dang much. We have another candy that resembles cocaine, also by the same company, Pixie Sticks. Uh, a candy company, Malaco, Sunline, Sunline Inc, Sunline Inc. <laughs> they uh, realized that kids were drinking like a popular uh, powdered like mix for to make juice. Uh, they were just like taking it straight from the pack. So they're like, boom, idea. Let's just like give them something that they we say is candy, but it's just straight up sugar. Um, and then they were like, why don't we just put in these little like straw things to give like easy access. So the trick is you gotta like, you gotta like get the, get the sugar all down. And then you, this is my technique y'all. This is insider info. Then you take the, do the little rip, get it off and you pop it open, pop it open. But the trick is, or the key is do not put your tongue, your lips, or anything on the, the wrapper because then it will just get wet and the sugar won't come out. 
You gotta just... <sighs> Why do kids do this? It's disgusting. It was kind of fucking good. Last but not least... Paprax. What a way to finish this with a bang. <laughs> right, dudes? So Paprax actually has a super cool history. It was invented back in 1975 by a food scientist on accident. He was trying to make a soft drink. Um, realized that mixing carbon dioxide with the sugar created like a popping and sizzling sensation. And so then they started marketing it as candy. Then a rumor came floating around that if you mix Pop Rocks with Coca-Cola, it explodes in your stomach. Um, then they took these off the market for a few years, which people think is because it was true. I suspect that it was probably just like really bad publicity. So they kind of had to go under the radar for a little while and be like, nope, it's safe. We fixed the formula. It's safe. Because like, how would that even happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, how would that even happen? It used to be called Action Candy. And then I changed it back to Pop Rocks. I hope I get some sizzle action for y'all. Mmm. Mmm. Hell yeah. This candy is so fun. Freaking love it. Like, genius, dude. You invented this by accident and now you're like a star. We did the 1970s. And it was... This was my favorite package by far. The 1970s were bangling and so many good candies. You got Sour Patch Kids, you got Swedish Fish, Pop Rocks, other stuff, Fun Dip. Like it was great. And I hope that you had fun watching it. And I can't wait to see what the 80s have in store. Let me know what your favorite candy is from this box. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, and Nancy Adams, this candy box is on Amazon. It's like $10. Um, if you're expecting like a crap ton of candy, you're not going to get it. Some of the reviews are like, oh, I was expecting all this. It's like, it's $10. You're getting like, people like to complain. Candy's good sometimes. And I like reviewing it if you like watching it. And I'll be back when I'm back. And we will dive into the 80s and our fourth installment. I need to clean all the candy off my bed. And uh, like and subscribe and... Let me know what your favorite candies were. Thanks for watching. Bye.